In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to tie the red spot fly Cree bug, developed by Mike Dokuto in Ohio. He showed me this pattern for carp. I've taken the pictures from his Instagram, developed it my own way. It's similar. It's not exactly his, but it works. Just drop this in front of a feeding carp, give it a twitch, see what happens. Simple to tie. Let me go through the ingredients with you. First off, it's going to be size six heavy wet nymph hooks. Size eight work as well. I want them sharp. I want them heavy. I want them strong. Next up, it's just going to be some brassy colored bead chain from Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. I want this to blend into the bottom. Next, I'm going to tie in some zonker that matches the materials I'm using. You can also use crosscut rabbit. And then I'm going to tie in some Cree hackle. Cree is a genetic variation. You cannot predict when it's going to come out of a bird. So when you get a hold of them, you really want to protect them. These are some of my prized ones. Just notice the color varieties in these. It's not like anything else you're going to find. You rarely ever will find these in a fly shop. And I'm going to be cutting the base ones here that are shorter for the claws of the crayfish. And then the longer fibers, those are going to be used as the hackle. And then last but not least, just some ice dubbing. It's going to be golden brown. And then I'm going to half hitch it, tie it off, and we're done. Regal vise, simple to use, few moving parts. I'm going to wrap my thread right behind the hook eye, cut the tag end, not putting my scissors down at all. Going to take my dumbbell eyes and wrap them in. This fly does a headstand when you throw it in the water. So the closer you put it to the eye, the better your headstand. Now advance my six aught thread right above the hook point. From there, I'm going to take my zonker and I'm just going to peel and rip some fibers off. Tie those in. Doesn't have to look pretty. Everything's going to be covered up. There, those are the mouth parts of the fly. Next, I'm gonna take the tips of those smaller hackles, tie it in facing me. You can crisscross them to make them splay out. That one seems to curve around. Crayfish are not always perfectly symmetrical, so don't worry. They get in fights, they get picked on by other fish, by birds, so they're gonna be missing parts of their bodies. They're not gonna have equal claws. Then I'm going to take that longer hackle fiber, tie it in right there. And last but not least, dubbing. Now notice a hole has been cut. That's a trick we learned from Art at Orvis. That way you can just pick off what you need. No dubbing loop here. You don't really need to. Just twist this on to your hook and start wrapping a body. I'm going to try and get it up and around the dumbbell eyes at a pinch more. You can hit this thing with a dubbing, you know, little tool to make this fibers pop a little more. And I'm just going to wrap this. Do as many wraps as you want or as few. Just want this fly to look nice and buggy. A couple extra there. I'm going to wrap around. Cut that off. And now I'm just going to do a couple wraps between the dumbbells and the eye. Going to half hitch. That's it. It's a fairly easy, very effective pattern. It doesn't need a lot of flash or bling or extra stuff. The bugginess of the natural materials just makes it work. I think that's a pretty darn cool looking fly. If you agree with me, tie them up. You can absolutely use different hackles. You can use grizzly, whatever. You really only see the Cree part here. But yeah, that, that's a pretty cool fly. So I hope you uh, learn to tie these and try them out this summer on your favorite warm water spots.